News of the Times Serial Killer Saturdays Joseph Vacker, The French Ripper Welcome to News of the Times. In today's episode, we cross the channel to explore the French version of Jack the Ripper. Vasher mostly preyed upon young girls and boys, oftentimes children working as shepherds in the countryside. As he travelled around the agricultural areas of France as a vagrant, estimates place his kill count between 11 and 27. Descriptions that Vacher himself gave would seem to indicate his regularly practising necrophilia. In today's episode of Serial Killer Saturdays, we take a look at the story behind Joseph Vacher and the victims of his murderous spree. Also, a question which continues to this day, was Vacher insane or did he know what he was doing? We hope you enjoy the show. As we regularly find in the case of serial killers, it is the last crime which unlocks the history of the serial murders. It all started with a canny judge who recognised in the tramp standing in front of him a described physical resemblance to previous wanted criminals. Little did the astute judge know that his observance would help to unravel a crime spree that lasted for years. From the Northern Guardian, the 13th of October, 1897, a French Jack the Ripper. The perpetrator of a terrible series of crimes has at last confessed his guilt. In June last, the body of a shepherd lad named Pierre Laurent was found at Cousier la Girodie near Lyon. The cartroid artery had been severed and the body mutilated. About a month ago, Joseph Vacquer, a tramp, was arrested near Tounon for criminal indecency. The presiding judge was struck by the resemblance between the prisoner and the description given of the murderer and ordered him to be transferred to Belay. During the journey, Vacquer tried to jump from the compartment but was prevented by the gendarmes. This act only increased suspicion, and after a severe interrogation by the Procurator of the Republic at Belay, supported by the testimony of several witnesses, the criminal confessed that he had in all murdered eight victims, including four girls, the oldest being 19, one old widow of 65, and three youths of 14 and 16 years of age. The victims were in each case barbarously outraged, raped and mutilated, and the circumstances will evidently make it necessary to inquire into the sanity of a monster who at the age of 28 has beaten the world record commenced by Dumiliard, the other murderers of the same kind. Joseph Vacquer belongs to a poor but respectable family of farmers at Beaufort. Joseph Vacquer belongs to a poor but respectable family of farmers at Beaufort. He was educated by the Marist brothers at saint jali laval and went through his military service at Bescanon. His conduct was so satisfactory that at the end of two years he was promoted to the lower grade of sergeant. The only blot in his life was firing a revolver in a fit of passion at a girl living in Bern, to whom he was engaged, who had jilted him. He then tried to commit suicide. Since then he has wandered over the provinces and his crime have been committed in eight different departments. He declares that his murders seemed predestined. He never sought his victims, but when they were within reach, 
the homicidal impulse was irresistible. After each murder, he felt relieved and solaced, as if he had been designated by God to outrage and slay a certain number of his fellow creatures. As pleasure was placed on Vakir, more horrific stories came out of a series of murders that had started some five years previously and which were aimed at some of the most vulnerable. Children acting as shepherds in the French hills far from the centres of town. Country police were ill-equipped in the day to accurately patrol the areas. From the London Evening Standard, the 13th of October, 1897. The Murders in France. Further details. A long series of murders dating from as far back as 1894 and committed in the southeastern districts of France under atrocious and revolting circumstances have at last been brought to a close through the arrest of the murderer Joseph Vaqueur. The victims have either been women or young girls or boys, mostly of the agricultural class. The last of these murders was perpetrated at Corzu, a small village near Lyon, on the 10th of June of the present year, 1897. A young shepherd boy was found in a field with his throat cut and the body hacked and dreadfully mutilated. The description of a stranger who had been noticed in that part of the country tallied with that of the author of a similar crime at Benons in the Aisne in August 1895. About a month ago, a man was sentenced at Tournon in the Ardèche for an aggravated assault on a woman and committed to prison. The examining magistrate was struck with the resemblance of the prisoner to the description given, and he communicated with the authorities at Belay the chief town of the district in which most of the murders had occurred, and it was decided to transfer the prisoner there. While at Belay, numbers of witnesses from all parts identified him as the man they had seen on the occasion of the murders committed in their vicinity. He had invariably denied everything until the day before yesterday when he confessed to the following murders. Louise Marcel, a girl of thirteen, found murdered in a wood near Draguillon in the Var in November 1894. Augustine Montreux, seventeen, found with her throat cut on the high road near Dijon on the 12th of May 1895. A widow named Moriand, sixty, assaulted and murdered in an isolated house at St. Ours in the Savoy on the 24th of August, 1895. Victor Portelier, a shepherd boy, 16, found in a field with his throat cut and horribly gashed and mutilated on the 31st of August. Pierre Pelle, a shepherd boy, 14, discovered with his throat cut in a lane at saint Etienne de boulogne on the 20th of September. Marie Moussiquier, a young married woman of 19, found at Cousset in the Allier on September the 1st, 1896. Rosine Rodier, a shepherd girl of 14, at varennes saint Honna, who had her throat cut and was disemboweled and mutilated. Pierre Long, a shepherd boy, 14, murdered as mentioned above. Joseph Vaquier is 28 years of age and was born at Roybon in the Isier. His parents were well-to-do farmers. He is of medium height, pale-faced, with sunken and drawn features and sparse beard. 
He served in the 6th Regiment of the Line and rose to the rank of non-commissioned officer. While still in the army, he became engaged to a young lady who, however, changed her mind, whereupon he attempted to shoot her. Rejected from the army, he was sent to the lunatic asylum at Dole and was thence transferred to an asylum at Saint-Robert in the Isier, which he left on the 1st of April, 1894. After that date, he had wandered about the country, begging from one farmhouse to another, and doing a little work from time to time. It was during this time he committed the shocking murders to which he has confessed, stating that he had been chosen by God to make victims on earth. News of Vachier's crimes filled the French papers. More victims were unearthed from his confession and from the similarities to victim disappearances and deaths. A series of what had been called cold cases to be relooked at with Vachier as the main suspect. From the Illustrated Police News of 23rd of October 1897, further examination of Vachier leads to the belief of the murder of the nine-year-old girl Olysse Boussillon at Verlou recently. The child's body was found a few yards from her home, fearfully mutilated. Vacur accused the examining magistrate that his victims did not suffer as he strangled them with one hand while smashing their skulls with the other. The murderer has written a letter to the newspapers in which he cites the story of his life and admits his many crimes, but says they were committed whilst he was crazy. He concludes by declaring himself an anarchist with inextinguishable hatred of society. So why did he do it? What actions could have occurred in his life to make anyone create such a horrific string of murders? Vachir's life history was examined, along with the exact timing of of the start of his crimes. From the Aberdeen Press and Journal, the 1st of December, 1897, about Joseph Vacquer. Vacquer was born at Beaufort on the 16th of November, 1869. His father was a well-to-do farmer and placed his son as a boy in a religious community where he remained till he was 18 years of age. He underwent his military training at Bescasson and conducted himself well in the regiment. He rose to the rank of sergeant and became engaged to be married. When his four years were up, however, his fiancée declined to fulfil her promise and Vacheur, in despair, fired four shots at her from a revolver, all happily missing her, and then lodged two balls in his own head. When his wounds healed, he was found to be insane and was shut up in a lunatic asylum. On the 1st of April, 1894, Vacquer was discharged as cured. From that time, Vacquer had lived the life of a tramp, wandering from village to village, farm to farm, sometimes begging, sometimes seeking employment as a labourer or a shepherd, or again, playing on an accordion that he carried slung on his back. It was during these peregrinations that this monster killed, mutilated and committed unspeakable outrages on the shepherd boys and girls he chanced upon in lonely parts of his route. For three years, Vacher pursued this horrible career and the number of his victims is supposed to amount to 19. In a very French way, focus was placed on the possible cause of his murderous spree being in part due to being jilted by a fiancée. From the Lloyd's Weekly Newspaper, the 24th of October 1897, 
Whilst in the army, he made the acquaintance of a young woman named Louise Barant, a servant in employment at Bescasson, and the pair became engaged. The date of the marriage was fixed when Vacure surprised and disgusted his sweetheart by trying to induce her to elope with him to Lyons and to start housekeeping before the marriage rite was performed. The girl indignantly resented the proposal and Vacheur attempted to murder her by firing four revolver shots at her, inflicting dangerous wounds. He then turned the weapon against himself and lodged two balls in his own head. Under pretext of going to Lyon to have the two bullets extracted, he secured his discharge from the asylum he was in. But, as a matter of fact, the operation was never performed, as Vacheur for the second time confirmed to the St. Robert Asylum as a madman. After a lengthy detention, he was discharged as cured, the doctors certifying that he had regained possession of his reasoning faculties sufficiently to be aware of the wickedness of having attempted the life of his sweetheart and his own life. Scarcely had he left the asylum than his career of crime commenced. Girl after girl was murdered, and no trace of the criminal could be discovered. Twice Vacher fell into the hands of the police, and he suffered separate terms of imprisonment for vagabonding and gross behaviour towards females. He says that he is an anarchist and has committed the many murders to avenge the ill-treatment he witnessed in the lunatic asylum to which he was confined through. At first, he maintained that he was impelled by God to shed blood. The doctors are of the opinion that he is not responsible for his actions, and that the bite of a dog which he sustained when he was young, or bullet which are still lodged in his head, may have contributed to his bloodthirsty madness. The canny judge who spotted the similarities between the tramp before him and reported described suspects to the other crimes brought Vacheur under the spotlight. Vacheur was to be brought to other locations where the crimes had been committed to be potentially recognised as the suspect of the crimes. From the Aberdeen Press and Journal, 1st of December, 1897. Long series of hideous crimes. Appalling career of a degenerate type. Lunatic or criminal? During the railway journey, Vacheur profited by a moment of inattention on the part of his guards, suddenly bound through the carriage window, but was caught by the feet and held in that position until the train could be stopped. At Belay, the witnesses were unanimous in their recognition of Vacheur as the man of whom the police had been in search. It was resolved to send the prisoner on to Lyon, there to be confronted with some persons that had got a glimpse of the murderer of a shepherd boy of fourteen at a village near the town. At this stage, Vakir became agitated and said he would make a confession. His avowals once begun were numerous and appalling, and the magistrates that heard them were petrified with horror and amazement. His avowed crimes. Vakir acknowledges having committed ten murders and two attempts, but he is expected to confess to many more, as he pretends that his memory is gradually getting clearer. The list of victims up to now is Louise Marcel, 13, a shepherdess, Augustine Motreau, 17, a shepherdess, Madame Morand, 65, a widow, Victor Portelier, 16, a shepherd, Pierre Massopelle, 14, a shepherd, Marie Moussier, 19, recently married, Rosine Rodier, 14, shepherdess, P. 
Pierre Laurent, 14, Shepherd, Eugenie Delhomme, 20, Mill Girl, and Aline Alès, 16. How were the crimes committed? Vaqueur details with shocking complacency the manner in which he perpetrated his hideous crimes. The method was invariably the same. With an abstracted and totally indifferent air, he approached his unsuspecting victim, and when almost in contact with him or her, he bounded forward like a tiger, seized the throat with one hand, and, with a razor or knife concealed in the other, laid it open with one slash. After his wanted and almost incredible outrages on the dead body, he quietly repaired to the nearest stream and removed as many traces of the crime as possible. As he was always wretchedly dressed, he borrowed old clothes and threw away those that were saturated with blood. How Vacure escaped the rest It will be incomprehensible to most people in this country how this atrocious monster should have been able to carry on his fearful work with practically impunity for over three years. The fact that the gendarmerie, what may be called the country police of France, is shamefully inefficient. This is said without reflecting on the activity or intelligence of the individual gendarme, who was generally an ex-soldier, exemplary and of good character. The fault lies with the administration, which overburdens these poor men with duties of all kinds, civil and military, in such a manner that the discharge of one set interferes with the effective accomplishment of the others. Another reason that contributed to Vakir's safety net was that, when asked for his papers, as happened only twice, he was able to produce his military discharge, or livret, proving that he had left the army with the rank of sergeant in a country like France, and in the eyes of an ex-soldier this would be regarded almost invariably as a satisfactory certificate. Throughout his incarceration and the trial, questions revolved around the sanity of Vakir. Was he responsible for his actions? Did he know what he was doing? The tricky question of culpability would be a question of life and death to Vakir. Experts within France and within England all had strong views either way as to Vakir's true culpability. From the Aberdeen Press and Journal, the 1st of December, 1897, the question of Vakir's responsibility. The opinions of eminent medical men and legislators on the question of whether Vakir should be regarded as a criminal or a lunatic have been eagerly sought and published in the newspapers by various editors. The Petit Journal has obtained and published the opinion on this point of a Dr. Jules Vaussoin, the eminent specialist in epilepsy, idiocy and lunacy. He says, For my part, while pointing out that I have not examined the individual, I am acquainted with his character only through the reports in the newspapers, so I cannot help believing on account of the horror and multiplicity of his crimes, on account of the total absence of remorse, and on account of the feeling of relief and calmness he alleges to have experienced after the commission of each act of blood, that this monster is lunatic. We find a man who, at intervals of greater or lesser extent, disembowels young girls and boys, subjects them to outrages, hides every object and disposes of every article of dress that could compromise him and who feels himself tranquilised. Then the words of God and duty appear in his confessions. It is the case of a mental degenerate, beset and dominated by one unhealthy idea. With the question going back and forth as to Vacher's psychological profile, medical investigations were pursued as to a possible physical reason 
Bavakur's gruesome acts of violence. From the Agricultural Reporter, the 26th of February, 1898, the French Jack the Ripper, a revolver bullet in his head. Joseph Vacher, the criminal known as the Shepherd Killer on account of his having murdered a score of shepherd boys and girls, will probably be declared irresponsible for his actions. Dr. Desto had photographed his head by the Rotogen rays and has discovered a revolver bullet lodged in the right side. He, Dr. Desson, says the bullet could not always have occupied its present position and that during its progress through Vacker's head, the vagabond would suffer from attacks of temporary insanity. The ball is the result of an attempt to commit suicide many years ago, since which occasion Vacker has twice been confined in a lunatic asylum. The trial in France was a sensation and filled the papers much as the Ripper stories had filled the English papers. English newspaper correspondents were sent to France to cover the story in person and report back to the English papers. Vacher's entire defence was based on an insanity plea and he was seen to do his utmost to prove by his actions that he was not responsible for the crimes he had committed. In the papers both in France and in England there was a considerable scepticism as to the veracity of Vacher's actions. A physical explanation of her having been bitten by a rabid dog as a child was another explanation of his insanity and his actions that were submitted by the defence. From the Civil and Military Gazette, 24th of November, 1898, a French Jack the Ripper. The trial began on October the 26th at Bourg, in the department of the Ain of Joseph Vacher, whose name raised the Pall Mall Gazette's correspondent will doubtless go down to posterity as a sort of modern bluebeard, exceeding in the horror attached to it even that of Jack the Ripper. Vacur has confessed to no fewer than eleven murders, all of which were accompanied by horrible mutilations and nameless outrages, and his victims were in most cases young shepherds or shepherdesses. He had twice been confined in a lunatic asylum, but the medical examination to which he had been submitted tends to show that he is fully responsible for his acts. He is typical of the French tramp, wandering through the country with a hurdy-gurdy or a bagpipe playing at village fairs, and for years he has been able to carry on his awful practices with impunity, and the tact has led many of the most reputable organs of the French press to point out how insecure are the lonely high roads which intersect the French provinces, and how insufficient is the local rural police whose business it is to protect them. The actual change upon which Vacher is being tried is the murder accompanied by terrible mutilation of a young shepherd named Victor Potelier, whom he attacked on a lonely moor near Bourg. He makes no secret of his guilt, but simulates madness. This morning, when he was brought into the Assize Court, he raised both arms in the air and exclaimed, Glory to Jesus! Glory to Jean d'Arc! to the grand martyr of the times, and glory to the grand saviour. A few women, seated in the audience, exhibited signs of fear at the appearance of the monster, who glared at them with rolling eyes, and thereupon the presiding judge warned Vachier that any attempt he might make to fling himself on his warders, as he had previously done in prison, would be followed by consequences to himself of the most 
disagreeable kind. His whole conduct in court was of the most eccentric description. His appearance is repulsive. Aged about 30, he has a flat nose, jet black hair, and a horrible squint. He wears a brown frieze suit and a rabbit skin cap. His counsel's efforts are mainly directed to inducing the court to look upon the prisoner as a madman and to order a new inquiry to be made into his mental condition. At the opening of the proceedings, Vakir read in a strange, harsh voice a declaration to the effect that he was mentally deranged in consequence of having been treated in his youth for hydrophobia with a peculiar remedy discovered by his parents, which had completely vitilated his blood. In the end, all of Vakir's attempts to morally expatiate himself of the crimes as a lunatic came to naught. He was universally found completely guilty of his murders with no quarter given. The drama surrounding Vakir did not end with the trial. As he approached the scaffold where he was to face Madame Guillotine, Vakir refused to walk and had to be carried all the while attempting to wriggle out of the pinioning of his body. From the St. Andrew's Citizen on the 7th of January 1899, the French shepherd murderer, scaffold scenes. Vacur, the French Jack the Ripper, who murdered about 18 persons, chiefly boys and girls, employed as shepherds, many of whom he mutilated, was guillotined at Bourg at daybreak on Saturday morning. He was sleeping sound when the officials entered his cell to awaken him. On learning that his last hour had come, he answered, We oui, do not think I care. You can do with me just what you like. I shall show no fear. He refused to hear Mass, saying he would celebrate it later on with Jesus Christ himself. He also declined all offers of refreshment. Whilst being prepared for the scaffold, he repeatedly asserted his innocence, remarking, If anyone here had calm conscience as I have, would they not be afraid to die? When all was ready for departure from the jail for the scene of execution, he suddenly changed his manner and obstinately refused to move. De Blier's assistants consequently hoisted him on their back and unceremoniously bundled him into the wagon, which was waiting, in which he was able to make a journey to the guillotine three-quarters of a mile away. An immense crowd had assembled there, and greeted the appearance of the cart with yells of delight and shouts of death to him, and away with the murderer. On the journey thither, Vakir continued to protest loudly against his sentence, and declared that he would have to be carried to the guillotine. He paid no attention whatever to the attendant chaplain's ministrations, declining to answer him, and he refused to kiss the crucifix. When the cart approached the guillotine, he struggled as violently as the straps with which he was pinioned would permit, but notwithstanding was practically thrown out of the wagon upon the sliding plank, which was to run into position in a second, and the knife fell. Loud cheers rang out, the criminal's head in the basket. Many persons shouted bravo and clapped their hands, while some of the women among the spectators waved their handkerchiefs. The question remained, was Vakir sane? or insane. Vakir's family clung to the belief that a post-mortem of Vakir's body would discover brain abnormalities that would explain all and would help to diminish the social taint on the family and correspondingly would place a burden of responsibility on the authority. However, no brain abnormalities were found.
From the St Andrew's Citizen on the 7th of January 1899, the French Shepherd Murderer. The corpse was immediately taken to the hospital for examination at the request of Vacker's relatives, who are confident the post-mortem examination will reveal that the miscreant was insane. The post-mortem examination made on the body showed his brain was of normal size and free from disease. All the organs of the body were healthy and the suggestion that he was maniac or insane is therefore contradicted. Vakir was condemned to death in October last at the Ain Assizes. He began his life as a tramp in 1894 and thereabouts. Since then he murdered four shepherd boys, six girls, or grown women and an old widow. Most of the victims were minding sheep or cows when Vakir came up behind them and cut their throats. That concludes this episode of Serial Killer Saturdays, Joseph Vakir, the French Ripper. We very much hope you enjoyed the show. If you did enjoy the show, please subscribe. Our goal is 1,000 subscribers, and with the fantastic support of our wonderful News of the Times community, we are making great progress towards that goal. We upload four days a week. Saturdays are Serial Killer Saturdays, where we do an in-depth look at a serial killer from our extensive database. The time spans of these ranges from as early as the mid-16th century to the 21st century and encompasses men, women, children and couples who kill. Mondays are murderous where we investigate in depth a historical murder. Wednesdays are wicked in this new series that will explore outrages, organisations, bloody locations and shocking events with a bit of murder and mayhem sprinkled in. And Fridays are frightful, where we pull together several stories with a similar theme. From all of us at the News of the Times team, thank you again for watching or listening. This has been News of the Times, and I am Robin Coles. <laughs>